Um, one, what is the difference between the Antichrist and the beast? And my second question is, uh, at what time in church history did the church uh, believe that the papacy was either the beast or the Antichrist? Well, um, okay, the first question, the difference between the papacy or the, uh, the Antichrist and the beast. The beast is mentioned only in Revelation, chapter 13 and 17, and also a, a brief mention in chapter 11. And the beast appears to be uh, an entity made up of many governments uh, because it has seven heads and ten horns. Now, the ten horns are said to be ten kings, and the seven heads are also said to be seven mountains and seven kings. So we're not just talking about an individual here. Some people think the beast is a man, and they equate him with the Antichrist. Uh, that's not a very natural way of looking at it. The beast in Revelation is a, a composite of the four beasts in the book of Daniel. In Daniel, there are four beasts that come out of the sea. In Daniel 7, there's one like a lion, one like a bear, one like a leopard, and one that has uh, ten horns. And so we see that the beast in Revelation chapter 13 has a, a mouth like a lion and feet like a bear, and it's like a leopard, and it has ten horns as well as seven heads. So it's obviously got the features of all four of Daniel's beasts. Now, Daniel's beasts do not refer to individual men. They refer to empires, the Babylonian, the Media Persian, the Grecian, and the Roman empires. So it's obvious that the beasts in, in Daniel are not individual men. They are empires. Now, the beast in Revelation is a combination of all of them, uh, apparently, and uh, it's it's be a, a, I think a tremendous mistake to think that the beast is a, an individual man. Uh, why would the beast in Revelation be an individual man when the beasts in Daniel, from which its description is borrowed, are not individual men? I think that the beast in Revelation simply represents all governments that persecute the church, as and there have been many throughout history, and I think that's what's represented by the beast. But if I'm wrong. At least the beast would not be an individual man. The beast would be a governmental system. Now, the Antichrist is a term that's used only in the book of 1 John and the book of 2 John. You don't find the word Antichrist in any of the prophetic literature in the Bible. Not in the book of Revelation, not in Thessalonians, not in the Olivet Discourse. The term Antichrist is not found in any prophetic book. The uh, word Antichrist is used only in John's first and second epistles. And there he says, whoever denies that Jesus comes in the flesh, this is Antichrist. He says, whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist. So John uses the term Antichrist generically. He says, as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, already there are many Antichrists, by which we know it is the final hour, John says. So uh, Antichrist is a generic term for anyone who's, uh, who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, therefore, uh, the term Antichrist would apply to almost any non-Christian person who doesn't recognize Christ as, uh, as the Messiah. Now, uh, therefore, Antichrist is a different term or a different concept than the beast. And neither of them are used in the Bible to speak of an individual man. Now, there is in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, a reference to the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition. And many people understand that to be a future antichrist and a future individual. And they say, well, that's, that's the beast. Although uh, I'm not sure that we'd have any reason to say that it is. There's nothing about the man of lawlessness in Second Thessalonians 2 that specifically identifies it with the beast of Revelation 13. But many people think that that is so. Um, now, when did the papacy begin to be viewed as uh, the Antichrist? Uh, well, even before the papacy arose, the early church fathers, see, the papacy arose, we might say, in the 5th and 6th and 7th centuries. It was a gradual procedure that the bishops of Rome began to take on more and more power and more and more prestige until around 600 A.D., Pope Gregory is thought to be maybe the first actual pope, and the papacy perhaps begins there, around 600 A.D. But in the 2nd and 3rd and 4th centuries A.D., so long before there was a papacy, uh, the church fathers who spoke about the man of sin, 
that is the man of lawlessness in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, they said that that man of lawlessness would rise when the Roman Empire would fall. There's at least, oh, maybe six or eight of the church fathers, if not more, who actually expressed this opinion. In fact, there's no other opinion about the man of lawlessness expressed in the church fathers at all. Uh, it was a unanimous view, as near as we can tell, of the early church, that when the Roman Empire would fall, the man of sin would rise. Well, of course, these fathers were writing and living before the fall of the Roman Empire. Therefore, they never saw the rise of what they considered to be the man of sin. However, after Rome fell and the papacy arose in its place as the power in Europe, it wasn't very long before some people, especially when they began to see the corruption of the papacy, began to identify the papacy with the, the beast or with the man of lawlessness or with the little horn, Daniel chapter 7. And this view was held even before the Reformation. It was held by the Franciscan order, of, which was Roman Catholic, of course. It was held by John Huss. It was held by John Wycliffe. Uh, these men were before the Reformation, a hundred or more years before the Reformation. And it was also held by all the Reformers, Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, John Knox. Uh, all, all the Reformers believed that the papacy was the man of lawlessness. And they said it is because when the Roman Empire fell, the man of lawlessness was to rise. They agreed with the church fathers about that. The difference is that the church fathers had, made, had given this interpretation before the event, before the fall of Rome. And the reformers, and some before the reformers, even before the Reformation, saw the papacy as fitting that description. So sometime, sometime in the Middle Ages, I don't know who the first person was to make that identification, but it was at least, at least a few hundred years before the Reformation, people, some people began to see the papacy as the, as the Antichrist. Uh, well, um, my question to that is, um, I, I don't know if that's wrong or right. Or I was raised a Catholic, but I read the Bible for myself, and I left the Catholic faith. Uh -huh. um, uh, my, my question is, th th there's nothing in the Word of God that says that the, the uh, man of uh, sin or lawlessness would uh, arise right after the Roman Empire fell, is there? Uh, well, that's, it's not stated directly. Uh, the reason the church fathers thought that that was the case was that they saw in Daniel chapter 7, that uh, the, there would be the fourth beast, which is the Roman Empire, that it would be destroyed and its body would be given to the burning flame. And then there's this little horn that grew out of the fourth beast that would apparently continue to blaspheme and to persecute the saints and do things like that. Oh, and yeah. So, and so they figured this little horn would rise on the fall of the Roman Empire. That is when the fourth beast was destroyed. And... Then they believed that Paul, when he spoke about the man of sin, or the man of lawlessness, that he was referring to the little horn of Daniel 7. I see. I see. And, and when Paul said to the Thessalonians, Paul said, you know what it is. You know what's preventing the rise of this man of sin. And when that is taken out of the way, then the man of sin will rise. Uh, Paul didn't say specifically what it was that was hindering, but the church fathers all believed that Paul is referring to the Roman Empire, that yeah. the, pre the presence of the Roman Empire was preventing the rise of the man of lawlessness. But they said when the Roman Empire is taken out of the way, then the man of lawlessness will rise. And they believed that that was why Paul was so obscure about it. Remember when Paul says, you know what it is that hinders him. Paul didn't say what it is, but he didn't want to be, he didn't want to put anything in writing that could be used against him to say he was advocating the destruction of the Roman Empire. So he was vague on the subject, they said. Anyway, that's a, a view that was widely held, essentially universally held, among both the early fathers and also the, uh, the reformers. The idea of an individual man of sin, an individual antichrist, came up uh, in the late 16th century from a Jesuit named Francisco Rivera. But we're out of time.